Hello everybody, we are live from Split Croatia. It's the second day of European Championship in Star Class. As you can see behind me, the channel of uh, Split, uh, the boats are out at the moment and in a few minutes, I think in 10 minutes time, the, the start, the, it's going to start the third race of the European Championship, the first race of this day. The conditions out there are at the moment a uh, nice sea breeze direction 255 with wind about 15 to 17 knots and uh, as it looks like it's building up. Uh, we expect the race course to be 1.5 mile long uh, so, so it's going to be approximately the same as yesterday. The race is going to be a bit more than an hour, really tough races and uh, we are looking for some good action today as well. So before we start, I would like to show you some interviews from after yesterday's racing from our sailors. Pa ništa, dobar dan. Prva regata bila odlična, dobar start, dobra strana. Znali smo da idemo u krmu dobro i iskoristili smo to obe dvih prve prvu regatu obe dvih krme i sigurno ušli drugi, možda malo sreće falio, možda smo mogli ući prvi. A druga regata smo imali prvo problem na startu, s jednim brodom posli na bovi od krme, tu smo dosta izgubili, nekako smo se uspili probiti oko sredine i nije moglo bolje. Hello, I'm Hubert Merkelbach from Germany. Uh, today was the first day of the European Championship of the Star Class here in Split in Croatia. We had uh, very nice conditions and uh, had a great uh, racing day as well. I teamed together with Kilian Weise from Germany and we uh, finished up a fourth place and a uh, first place. So I think overall we are leading now the, after one day. I am Enrico Chieffi from Italy. Okay, your, your impressions of the first day of the regatta in split? Ah, first day of the regatta in split, incredible beautiful sea breeze it came a little later but very very good i mean it's an incredible place to sail i'm very glad i had good results today but very tough later a very a lot of fun i have to say okay that's it thank you thank you so much ja sam Tonči Stipanović evo prvi dan evropskog prvenstva e, nismo baš e, baš dobro otvorili Obe dvije regate smo startali doslovno zadnji i međutim prvu regatu nismo ništa pogodili nakon toga sve krive odluke tako da nismo se nešto previše izvukli dok drugu regatu smo bili malo smireni i malo bolje jedrili i kroz regatu uspjeli doći na kraju do četvrtog mista što je super tako da eto, idemo zaboraviti tu prvu regatu danas i, i okreni se novom no danu i nove dvije regate. As you could see in these interviews, we had an interview with a with the leading guy of after the first day of European Championship, Hubert Mechelbach and Kilian Weisse. Uh, they were very happy with their sailing, with their consistency, which which put them in the first place as well. You could see the Italian Enrico Chieffi, one of three gold stars. Um, uh, he was uh, he was his second overall after the first day, and you can see the interview. But it was in creation of uh, Mate Arapov and Tonči Stipanović, the two uh, two Croatians who are in the front at the moment. They said that they were mostly happy with the day uh, with the day with the previous day. They 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 were struggling in some areas, uh, especially Tonči with the starts. But they were ma they managed to in one of the races uh, they managed to to get away with it pro with that problem and, and uh, got a good score. So and they are hoping for today for a better result. I think the as I can hear from race committee both I think uh, the orange flag is up and uh, soon we're gonna be into the procedure of the five, five minutes procedure. And you can see the results uh, after, overall results after yesterday. In the first place, Meckerbach Weisse in the first, Kiefi Colanino in second, Diaz Nehemer in third, Flavini Seravella in fourth, and Rapov Shitic in fifth, and so on. So it was 
you can see that only the the two two to three front guys managed to have the consistency which uh, and they have a lowest scoring points at the moment i mean they are a bit far from from the from the other guys and it's a, it's a good start into regatta uh, as you might no, after the fifth regatta, they will be able to discard the worst one. So, but looking the conditions we have today and uh, looking the weather forecast we, uh, for the next upcoming days, I think we're gonna have each day the nice sea breeze and that race gonna be that the schedule is gonna be filled. Yeah, I think we are now live with the camera on the racing course. I think the guys are still trying to search for the better side to see which start is favorite. As well, after yesterday, they have some intels on which which side was better, and as well, they're gonna that gonna affect them in choosing their strategy. Okay, we are three and a half minutes away from the start of the third race of European Championship in Split. I would say that, that the conditions looking a bit stronger even than today. Today we had a nice sea breeze in the first race around 15 to 17 knots while in second race it did drop it did drop slightly i think around 12 knots and looking now from the onboard cameras i would say i would say it's it's more than 17 knots so so we should have this should be a really nice racing we were as well shortly on board of Croatian Mate Arapov and Ante Šitić. As well today in split is around 25 Celsius degree, wet, sunny and the sky is clear. So beautiful conditions. I think the guys couldn't ask for more. We are one and a half minutes away from the start. I think the guys should already be in their position on the starting line, trying to build up the space to have a nice, to, be, to build up the speed and, and have a nice start. We are looking, we are waiting for cameras from the, bo from the boat, which is on the race course. Yeah, nice. Nice, we have a starting line there. The boat's looking quite below the line at the moment. I would say five, six boat lengths.
Okay, we have the we have the start of the third race of European Championship. The start was clear. We have a nice start from American Doug Smith and Payson Infelis. Clear start. Looks like the left side, the left side of the starting line was in favor. We can see that one of the boats did tack on the port and, and managed to cross all the fleet. say as well that today with me in the studio there there will not be Raquel unfortunately she had a problem with her throat and she's unable to talk at the moment we wish her sp speed recovery and to come help me as soon as possible <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry in advance if, if there will be some delay in my speech or some emptiness On the top of Americans, we can see uh, Flavio Favini and Nicolas Seravele. They are heading towards the left side. They are fourth at the moment in overall. Yesterday, in the first race, they had a uh, first race they won. They had a nice clear start and they were leading from the beginning until the end. I think they were more than happy with that result. While in the second race, they were uh, in the middle of the fleet around 15th place, but still, but still it keeps them in the fourth overall. By saying that, that means probably that this breeze, stronger breeze of 17 and more knots is something which they which they like and, and, and they feel confident with. We are again on board with Marin Mishura and Tom Kobaraj. Today, today we will have a five on board camera comparing to yesterday three. Uh, I think we have three cameras on uh, three Croatian boats on uh, Mate Rapovante Šitić, Tonči Stipanović, Tudor Vilic and Marin Mišura and Tonko Baraj and, uh, and with uh, German uh, Hubert Merkelbach and Kilian Weisse and uh, with Italian Enrico Chieffi and uh, Ferdinando Colanino. looks beautiful I I can tell that I feel jealous about those guys I wish I was out there sailing as well conditions looks perfectly and the weather forecast says the until for sure until five o'clock we're gonna have the, this strong breeze while while at that time around five o'clock it's gonna slightly drop drop but still still gonna be around 12 knots.
nice on-board action from Tonči Stefanović and Tudor Bilic. It's nice to hear the voices from the boat as well. We could see that that crew Bilic is helping Tonči. Once again, this championship gathered 34 sailors from 16 different countries. We have three gold stars, meaning the three world champions in this fleet. Ogi Diaz, who is double world champion from 2016 and 2019. Then we have uh, Enrico Chiefi, who was gold medalist in 1996. And we have uh, Xavier Rojar as well, two times world championship. 2003 and 2005, five and bronze medalist from Olympic Games in Athens 2004. As well, there is a, a German uh, Hubert Merkelbach, which is European Championship, and and uh, the Swiss guy Pierre Eckler, he was as well the gold medalist on European Championship. Action from Matea Rapov and Ante Šitić. Looking from this left side, did paid out. The, the, these boats are probably close to the left lay line, heading towards the mark. They looks like they have a nice lift, nice breeze filling it in from the left side. And they look for me way in front of the right right hand side fleet. Doug Smith had a great, good left-hand start. Probably he's in the lead at the moment. We are more than halfway of first beat.
I would say that camera is suggesting to us this, that these are the first three boats of the fleet at the moment. The American Doug Smith and Payson in Felis, German Hubert Mechelbach and Kilian, uh, Kilian Weisse, and uh, below them Italian Flavio Favini and Nicolas Seravella. Seravelle, sorry. Starboard port action. Fleet is getting closer again after they spread out. say that wind is still building up and it might be even 20 knots or more out there. So really tough conditions for the sailors. Looking conditions from yesterday and for, from today, uh, maybe I'm too subjective about this place, but this place looks wonderful for regattas. The conditions are perfect. It's mid-May, end of the May, and this sea breeze and, and 25 Celsius, it's, it's looking just perfect, just what you need. Also, as yesterday I mentioned when uh, Raquel asked me about which strategy I would choose before, before the start, I think today again paid out the left side of the race course. Uh, that's something which happened especially in the beginning of the sea breeze when the breeze is building up. Uh, you get the more, the more breeze is filling in from this side and it's just lifting you up. So you are always, you are looking to win this, the left-hand start and, and 
to open the left side to protect it. And as we could see, the, the, the boats who, who did manage to start clearly on, on, on the pin end and uh, have a, to have a clear start and manage to open the left side, they are, they are in the lead at the moment. These are the nice pictures in the back with a split. The channel of split is uh, surrounded with uh, two islands, uh, one island branch and island Sholta. It's a really safe place to sail and uh, because it's a channel it, it's offering during, uh, during most of the days of the year, it's offering the windy conditions and you are able to sail. As well, biggest, the biggest, uh, biggest fleet of, uh, of sailors is coming from the split, the Olympic sailors is coming from the split, the, the past one and, and the one who are competing now. So, so yeah, split is split is one of the most uh, split is the most uh, sailing place in in Croatia. We are on board with the leader of of the of of the day one of European Championship, Hubert Merkelbach and Kilian Weisse. They are fully hiking out, so we are not able to see their faces, unfortunately or fortunately. I think they love. I think they love the conditions in which they need to hike. I think we are getting closer to the first mark. We saw some boats. We saw some boats uh, tacking uh, starboard. That means that they are close to the ley line. As well, this might be. We are on board with Mate Arapov and Ante Šitić. This might be that they are as well on the ley line. Nice footages. Mate is one of the most experienced sailors in Croatia. He's coming from sailing club Mornar. Sailed for a for a long time in, in laser standard and uh, later he tried uh, to compete uh, to qualify for the London Olympic Games. Unfortunately, he didn't go. But one of the one of the biggest role models in in, uh, in split uh, uh, sailor ro role models, and especially I think uh, in his uh, club, uh, yeah, club more. He had a great start of the yesterday event. In the first race, he finished second.
are 15 minutes away from the start comparing to yesterday's length this the, the first upwind mark might be soon there this is the this is the front pack of the fleet first 10 boats Yes, we are a few minutes away from it. You can see some of the boats did tuck earlier than the lane line or or maybe I'm in, in the wrong angle seeing it. Probably they didn't want to go too much over the lane line and be forced to for the reaching because in that case they would lose the, the meters they gained before. And the star class has a uh, how is a na really narrow angle going upwind. So, so they will slowly, slowly manage to to close the gap, to close the, this lane line, uh, to close the lane line, and go, go more up. Yes. We are getting close to the mark. I think in the lead is a German Hubert Mechelbach, the leader of the first day. Yes, he's rounding the he's rounding the top mark in the first place. In the second place, we have Americans. Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehemer. Rounding the mark in Italian, Enrico Chiefian, Ferdinand Colanino, as well the Greek Emilios Papatanasios and Stilianos Nutosos. Sorry if I mispronounce some of the names and surnames. Here as well, we are on board with Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj. They are at the moment the best Croatians in this regatta. Marin Mishura is ex Finn sailor. He stopped sailing after the London Olympics. joined forces with uh, Donko Baraj sailing in star. On the last world champion event, they were fourth overall.
we are now with the leader after the first day and leader of the third race of the day. Okay, thank you for this. This was the leg one mark rounding the top five boats. Yes, he's rounding the he's rounding the top mark in the first place. In the second place, we have Americans. Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehemer. Italian Enrico Chiappian, Ferdinand Colanino, as well with Greek Emilios Papatanasios and Trianos Tosos. Okay, this was the, the short recap of Mark rounding of top five boats of, of the fleet. Okay, we are on board with the leader of the race three at the moment. Look at these nice pumps. A lot of a lot of working out there. It's a nice sea breeze of 20 knots or more. Great conditions for sailing. Great conditions for this beautiful class. The crew of uh, Hubert Mechelbach is Kilian Weisse. The, he is a young, talented German sailor. Look how he's trying to push the bow down. Let's shortly recap again the mark rounding. Uh, the first mark rounding in the first place was Hubert, second Diaz, third Smith, fourth Kefi, and fifth Papatanasio. Will be interesting to see if there will be some lead changes down the uh, down the uh, around the bottom gate mark. Thank you. 
Looking down in the, uh, looking down in, I think most of the guys are choosing to go to go starboard as as much as much as they can. Probably probably to pump and go 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 much deeper. I'm I'm not sure which is direction of the waves comparing to the comparing to the wind. But usually it's something a bit righter than the wind direction, and as I said before uh, today, the the wind direction is uh, 255. So it's nice westerly wind. So yeah, looking for, looking down in, they are choosing to go right right hand side, and probably later to later to jibe. We are here on board with uh, Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj in, in, in the race three, the top Croatian crew. Okay, we are on board with Mate Arapov, Mate Arapov and Ante Šitić. The best, the best uh, Croatians overall after the first day of, re of regatta. They had, uh, they are in the fifth position overall, having yesterday second and 14th place. Mate is ex laser sailor and star sailor and uh, Ante Šitić is his all-time crew. This condition of sea breeze, uh, westerly wind is something which is very typical for, for this time of year. Normally starting uh, early in the May when the when already the temperature starts to go up, uh, we have we have we have this wind, and it's mostly blowing. Uh, I mean, ev we have every day this nice sea breeze uh, until until end of uh, October, almost until end of October. So during the summer, it's it's really nice. It's really nice. Also, is Croatia being being popular destination touristically, and a lot of people coming for chartering out the yachts. They enjoy they enjoy sailing during the summer. And as I said before, Croatia Croatia. I mean, I said for for the split being surrounded with the islands, Croatia has lots of islands, and uh, you can easily go from one to another in the short short distance and and be safe Okay, we are we are rounding the gate. We are with the footage at the downwind gate. German Hubert Mechelbach and Kilian Weisse did extend their lead, looking confident.
nice jibe rounding the mark. I had my own experience doing the same, but it wasn't this clean. It wasn't like this clean. Okay, this is some change in the positioning. I think in the second position there is Italian. Enrico Chieffi and Ferdinando Colanino. While in fourth, the mark is rounding Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehemer. Sorry, I made a mistake. This is in fourth, Chieffi. Position Marin Mishura and Donko Baraj. Nice downwind from Toji Stepanovic and Tudor Bilic. They close the gap. Some onboard problems trimming the jeep before mark rounding. And I got correction about uh, mark rounding in the second place. Uh, in the second place, uh, Itali that Italian was Fl uh, Flavio Favini and Nicolas Seravale. Sera Seravale. Seravale, sorry. So first place Hubert, second place Flavini, third place Diaz, fourth Kiefi, fifth Papatanasio. Okay, as well, now we have on the screen top five of, of the leg two. Unfortunately, today we don't have the live footage from the air from the drone. The wind is too strong to put him up but I hope you enjoy these footages as well. We are again with the leader of the first day overall and the leader of the third race. like they have a really that they are enjoying these conditions they have a good speed as well taking the lead in the upwind they extended their lead in the downwind This footage is old versus new. 
Also, uh, Hubert Mechelbach was the third on Eastern Hemisphere Championship 2016, which was held as well in Split. As well, the organizer was uh, Sailing Club Mornar. So, he might be familiar with this place. At the time, at Eastern Hemisphere, the, the gold medalist was uh, Ogi Diaz and the silver medalist uh, was Tonči Stipanović. As well, for uh, personally for me, that was my... I think that was my first event ever sailed in star class. Shortly before, I, I, I was offered the chance from a friend of mine, one uh, Croatian laser sailor, Filip Jurišić. He uh, offered me a chance to sail with him in the star class, and it was a great experience, and uh, I did love every second of it. I think the class is, the class is wonderful. Yes, it is old, but old in terms of, of when it was built out. But, but it's the, 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 the technique, uh, the time you need to invest into the rigging the boats, everything, the, the passion the boat has, you, you just love it. It's, it's the pure sailing. Also, a lot of great sailors coming out from the star class, the, the world famous sailors. And, and we are sorry to see that this class is not at the Olympic Games. Also, as you could see in the, in the in intro of, the, of, today's, of today, uh, with interview with the uh, with the uh, Italian uh, Enrico Chieffi, he said that this is the class of the champions. And as well, it was not on the interview, but we were speaking with uh, uh, with Argentinian Juan K. He he compared this class with a with a with a beautiful instrument. So pro probably assuming he was thinking about uh, violin, because it's it's so delicate. Uh, you you need to invest so much time into rigging it and to making everything perfect on the boat. Camera with Tonči Stipanović and Tudor Bilic. This, the second, the second uh, Croatian, Croatian boat at the moment. Uh, they were, they are sailing together since uh, SSL uh, 2019 on Bahamas. They are Tonči is competing at the Tokyo Olympic Games this year, and he is trying to squeeze as much time and his as he have in his schedule to to train and to go to go uh, to go ra to go racing in in star class so having the championship in his hometown it, it was it was a great chance for him so he sacrificed a little bit of of the laser to to compete to compete here and we are happy to see him because he is because he is a true legend in croatia Two of them, Stepanovic Bilic, were were fourth at the last European Championship in Garda last year. So I think their expectations are high, and they are looking for for podium this time. Talking about Tonči Stepanovic, he is the first Olympic uh, sailing Olympic medalist in Croatia winning the silver in laser in Rio and this medal uh, bring uh, did bring a lot of joy in the in the in the sailing world here okay we are with the footage 
Oki Díaz. Ogi Diaz rounding the downwind gate in third place. Let's let's see if he kept his position or maybe if, if he managed to squeeze the distance with the first Hubert. Great sailor, great guy. Sailing for a long time in star class as well. Lots of knowledge. We can see how Hubert is is every now and then looking backwards, controlling where the other boats are. Being in the front position is, I would say, much easier. You are, you are, you don't have to think a lot about the strategy. You are, you are just thinking, you are focused on the other sailors, on the other boats. And if you can control them, put them in the safe place, you don't have to think about anything. And for sure, the, for sure, their boat speed is, is is on the top, so they don't have to. They are not worried. They shouldn't be worried. We see him sailing port. The fleet did spread a lot, so unfortunately there is not much action at the moment. But we are seeing the footages of the star class at, at, it, at its best. 20 knots of nice sea breeze. 
here in front of Split, Croatia. Wonderful conditions. I think the sailors are enjoying it. Okay, we are back on board with Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj. They are they have the best Croatian results on world champions on world champions in, in Star Class. They were fourth 2019 in Porto Cerro. Looking from the way the German Hubert Mechelbach and Kilian Weisse are sailing, uh, they, are, they are already a long time sailing a port, port tack, meaning that uh, they are quite safe. As well, the, the boats which are maybe uh, above them, more to the left, more to the left lay line, are not, they are not presenting the danger for them. And uh, they are closing the closing the way towards towards the right lay line, and maybe even extending their lead. That's that's just my assumption. The fleet we had now in the footage was the fleet which was on the on the left uh, left hand side ley line. We are back with Ogi Diaz who was third on the downwind gate. Uh, 
uh, he is as well after the after the yesterday result yesterday uh, results uh, he's in the third position being uh, having the eighth and seventh place yesterday it's an it's an these are two two keepers and uh, I think I think with yeah now he's going good being third being third he's he pushed himself even even more in front. Okay, we are we are maybe a minute away from the rounding the third mark, the second upwind. In the lead of today's third race, German Hubert Meckerbach and Kilian Weisse. They are having the nice advantage at the moment. After winning yesterday the second race of the day, this might be the second bullet for them. But let's wait for the downwind and finish line to be sure. We are on board with them and we can see the nice advantage. Almost the whole offset, yes, even more. Now coming coming in the second place, Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehammer. The third uh, which are in the third place overall after the first day of, of European Championship. Oh, we had uh, some problems with Italians after they did tech. What is the problem? I think the crew fell down in the water. They were in the third, but they made a mistake on the tack. And and the Italian and the Italian Enrico Chiaffi and Fernan, uh, Ferdinando Colanino did take advantage of that and passed in front of them, and they are now in the third with Emilios Papatinacios and Stilianos. Nozos in in fourth. Now in fifth place, Flavio Favini and Nicolas Seravele.
unfortunately, we don't have the onboard camera on on, on Flavio Favini and Nicolas Saravelle boat, but it would be interesting to see what did happen there. As I could see, yes, we can see on the back of the boat the crew is jumping in. Probably was a mistake during the tack. Yeah, yeah, we love to see some action. Thank God everything was good. Okay, with the footage, we are back in the downwind. These are the top five boats of the race three at the moment. Meckerbach, Weisse, Diaz, Nehammer, Chiefi, Colanino, Papatanasio, Nozos, Flavini, Saravelle. Heading downwind toward the finish line. Comparing to the comparing to the downwind gate, uh, Diaz did gain uh, did gain one position, while uh, Favini rounding in second did lose three. On board again with Marin Mishura and Tonko Barac. <laughs> we can see that Marin is angry a bit. Nice lead from uh, Meckerbach Weisse. You can see how much in front they are. so I cannot translate you this. But I think they're probably talking about uh, trimming the boat for downwind sailing. I would say he's in the lead uh, for more than half minute, comfort lead, and he can enjoy the scene out there.
talking about sail technique in the star class in downwind. It's a bit different than this, the other Olympic classes to sail in. The boat is much heavier and much harder to steer. So the, the, the reaction of the boat is slower and you cannot you cannot play with it as you are as I'm talking as from my own experience you cannot play with it as you play with a with a fin class Beautiful footages from the cameras which are close to me, next to my studio. We are now around one hour and ten minutes into this race. I think the boats are... The first boat is going to be soon in, in crossing the finish line. The leader of today's race at the moment is German Hubert Merkel Merkelbach and Kilian Weisse. They are leading the fleet since, uh, since the third first mark rounding and they were just extending their lead through the race 
while the other while the other guys were were uh, uh, changing their position through through the regatta. Now having the having the leg three rounding uh, in the second place with Oki Diaz and Christian Nehammer. In the third place, uh, Kiefi, Enrico Kiefi and uh, Ferdinando, Ferdinando Colanino. In the fourth place, uh, Emilios Papatanasio and Stilianos Nozos. And in the fifth place, another Italian, Flavio Favini and Nicolas Saravele. We are as well cheering up for our Croatian guys. I think I saw two of them in top ten. It was Marin Mishura and Tonko Barac and, uh, and Tonči Stipanovic at, and Tudor Bilic. But let's see how they're going to sail this downwind. I bet this. Con uh, I bet the race being this long and in these conditions, it's it's really tough for the sailors, and and they will they will make a good rest in this short break, which is gonna come in between these two races. Yeah, we see that that the crew is sitting back inside, not pumping too much anymore. Comfort lead finish line soon yeah that's right so we can congratulate to German Christian uh, Hubert Mechelbach and Kilian Weisse for having another bullet after yesterday's second race This means that still, overall, they are in the first position. Okay, we have a footage from the drone. Maybe we have a few knots less out there. I cannot be 100% sure, but I think this is Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehammer in the second place. Yes, that's true. They as well had a comfort lead, uh, the comfort distance uh, rounding the Mark III, and they keep, keep, the, keep it safe. place we cannot see this was Tonchi Stepanovic and Tudor Bilic Had, looks like they had a great downwind. Managed to come maybe, I think, in a fifth position.
Okay, we have now the official finish. In the first place, German Meckelbach Weisse. In the second place, Diaz Nehammer. In the third place, Papatinasio Noutsos. Fourth place, Kefi Kolanino. And fifth place, Tipanovic Bilic. This was the this was the third race of the European Championship. I think the German guys did extend their lead after yesterday, getting the another first place. So we had uh, this was the finish of the third regatta of European Championship here in Split Croatia. The first day, the first regatta of the second day, we had a nice sea breeze, 18 to 20 knots. Beautiful waves, nothing more the sailors could ask for. Uh, you had to, you saw some action, especially action surrounding the third, the second up with Mark, with the Italians, the crew falling out of the boat. And we are hoping to see uh, some actions again in the second race of the day. And we'll be shortly with you once we know when the race is going to start. So see you soon.
everybody again. We are back. We are three minutes away from the start of the uh, of the second race of the day. I think uh, we will check now. I, I, I think the Raquel is with me on the line, and she yes. gone. She hello, gonna. Yusef. Hello, hello. <laughs> yes. she... Sorry, we have left you the first race. Yes, she she gonna try to help me out the second race. Yeah, can you can you make a short resume of the first one? So Hubert is the winner, so probably the overall leader again. Yes. What did you think since uh, the beginning, since the start? Yes, yes. The he uh, not sure about the position of his start, but but since uh, the round he round the first mark in the first place, and he was uh, since then he was leading. And uh, actually, he was extending his lead all the time, and I think he even, I would say, he was like more than half minute in front of the second boat, which was Ogi Diaz. So yeah, it was it was. Oh, he, a, had a he had a perfect race. He had a perfect race. But I can see the conditions are similar to yesterday, with the wind coming, the sea breeze coming in from southwest. Yes, that's right. That's right. We have we have confirmation from the from the race committee boat that uh, the direction of the wind is from two four five, uh, twelve knots at the moment. This means that the wind did slightly drop. As well, the length of the of the first beat is uh, one point four mile. So a little bit shorter, a little bit less wind than the first one, just like yesterday. Yes, that's true. That's true. Even though it it feels more, I would I would tell. But yeah. For sure, they are more accurate. Last night, I spoke to some of the competitors, and uh, to us, everything looked uh, so perfect. But some of them were complaining about uh, the chops, the the, um, the little waves, that they were difficult to manage. Yes, yes, the waves are coming. The waves are coming uh, a bit righter than the than the wind. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so on the on the port tack, uh, it. It's like almost straight in your bow, and it's 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 choppy, yeah, and it's okay. and it's hard to con to make the boat uh, control like not to bump all the time. Yeah, we're gonna see. Well, yeah, we're gonna hear I'm from sure, them right? later today and see. Did they feel the same about about it today? Yes. Yeah. So I can see everybody's getting ready on the start line because it's uh, 40 minutes, 40 seconds to go. And um, looks like they're evenly, evenly spread on the starting line, so they don't. Nobody's fighting for pin end or for committee boat. Oh, actually, they're more on the committee, to be honest. So they, more on the right. Yes, they look like they are more on committee boat this time. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, definitely. The, fir the first race, the first race, the pin end start was uh, much in favor. You can see that after the after the first start, the the pin and boats were were in the front of the fleet even when they were tuck on the board they were crossing crossing the fleet to the right yeah so i think they might think that the wind is going to go like yesterday a little bit on the right when you it, when it's going down yes we had we had the start of the second race of the day yeah i think it was a clean start we had a good start uh, of the first guy here on pinan which is ita something and uh, good start over there at the committee boat. Yes. I think. But they're too far off to see. Um, this guy is probably out. Is he coming back in? Yes, the, so on the pin and start was Flavio Favini. It was Italia okay. 8568. And I think his general, general recall, you can see the rip crossing the bones uh, of the boat. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think the, the fleet which was closer to the, to the race committee boat was out. Yeah, so I was too optimistic. Yes, yes. When yes. I called it clear, clear, clear start. But Flavio Favini also had a nice uh, first race today, no? Yes, yes, he had a nice first race. Uh, he was, he I think finished in the fifth position or sixth position. He had a slight problem on the rounding the the third mark, actually the second upwind. His crew did fell out of the boat, and I think it happened on. Oh, wow. Yes, it, I think it happened on the on the on the tuck uh, before the mark. I mean, I, I couldn't see clearly, but I saw from the camera that the crew was was stepping uh, out from the water on the boat uh, from the back. That he, he was yeah getting into the boat uh, on the back of the boat, jumping in. So <laughs> probably he was out uh, out in the water. 
Nicolas Ceravalle is his crew. Yeah. He's Italian, young, and athletic. So we have to talk to him after the race to see what happens. Maybe he wanted to clean the bottom of the boat. I'm not sure. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that was the intention. Yes. <laughs> so two races yesterday, two races probably today, two more tomorrow, and then one on Saturday, according to schedule. Yeah, according to schedule, that's true. Yes. And this 2021 Star European Championship uh, uh, is, like we said, the first one with uh, the first one in a year with so many nations represented. It's 20 nations for 34 teams, and um, well, it's great to see so many flags around the race course, so many different team numbers, and it's nice to see Hubert Markelbach, uh, the class president. Uh, doing so well on his uh, last year of presidency with Julian Weiss, the young uh, German uh, group. Yes, that's true. It's nice to see the big fleet, the diverse fleet again on the starting line. I think, as you said, the last year they only had the one major event, Europe, European in, in uh, Riva del in Garda. So I think, I think they were looking for, for uh, another big event. Yeah, because uh, a month ago the Western Hemisphere was held in Miami, but it was mostly with uh, American sailors, American teams, because the travel bands were still very strong over there. And here we do have two Americans. We have Ozzy Diaz uh, sailing here with um, with um, Austrian crew Christian Niehammer. Yeah. And uh, we have Doug Smith sailing with uh, Californian Paisen and Felis. Yeah. I think we can have the the the, the start <laughs> the previous start, which was general recall. We can see that the boats close to the race committee were were out. Yeah, probably yeah, yes. Out. Yes, too yes. Positive, yes. Too yes. Optimistic. Yes, they were too optimistic. So I, I I would say I would say as we have slightly delay in the start, probably the pin end is going up, or either the race committee boat is is going going a bit down to make yeah. to make to make the start starting line even yeah yeah so they are ready because they gave another five minutes so it's uh, 340 to go yes 340 to go they shortened a little bit of the course so it's uh, 1.4 1.4 1.2 miles 1.4 nautical miles okay 1.4 so that will be around an hour race as usual yes i think gonna be the same now this the previous one was around i think the first boat came in one one hour 15 minutes more or okay, less a bit longer yes yes well, like it was long and it was long and tough race you could see you could see the upwind the way they were hiking downwind pumping it was it was like a really nice race for them yeah because you would think two races per day or even one, only one during the world race, the Star World Championship. You you think that uh, is you know too easy on them, but it's actually so long and so exhausting, and it's such a tiring boat that uh, two races per day are more than enough. Yeah, it's more than enough. I saw some of the guys this morning in the club, and they said they feel tired after the yesterday. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Sometimes they're tired of the one only race uh, during the Star Wars Championship because it's uh, two mile long. So that is about uh, a two hour race. Oh, yeah, that, that's a long one. It, is. it that... is. Sometimes it's better to have more 20 minutes races. It's easier on the body to have uh, multiple 20 minute races than just one, uh, one hour, two hours long. It's, it's, a, it's a different, different, different style. The star, yeah, the star class has this long, long, long one as well. Myself in in a fin class, we had when it's the when it's the class organizing the races. We as well have one 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 hour fifteen minutes target time. So, so I'm kind of used to this longer one. Yeah, well, they're definitely more strategic. Yes. Tactical, and you have to concentrate um, on the long run, not just. Uh, 
you cannot just have the finish line in your mind, but you have to have the whole course and yes, the whole Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yes. We are one minute, uh, one minute, 20 seconds away from the start. Uh, we can see that again, uh, not majority, but the all boats are choosing the right hand side of the starting line. Yeah, so, it's committee boat for everyone. Yeah, either a race committee boat is like much in favor or, or there were some or there was some shift in the breeze. Yes, or they're just there but then they will extend a little bit over the line in this last minute. Yes. We'll see. But for sure that is the favorite side. Let's hope it doesn't end up being another general recall. Because they're so eager to start. Yes, so true. But it looks like they're a bit more uh, careful this time. <clears throat> of course, the drone uh, we're watching the, the race from is a little bit more in front of the pin end. No. So this uh, mislead us. And uh, it looks like on the committee board, they might be over already, huh? Yeah, my, it looks like... I think they're over already. Yeah, maybe maybe one, two boat. Maybe one or two boat might be out. Not sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't have the... We don't have, I think, in, like in in a, in a second accurate time. More, more. So we, we cannot be 100% sure. Yeah, it's... Yeah. No, they're just out. This is the, the rabbit boat that goes... Uh, and stop the regard. Yeah, this is the rubber boat going in front of everybody. Normally below whistling, normally. Well, it, it, it is likely that they will, um, they will hoist the black flag now. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, um, I don't. We don't have the information either. They put a, uh, if they put the AP before the start, or they let the start go and make the general recall. I don't know if, if they found they if the race committee found it as their own mistake or not not adjusting the line perfectly, or or they found the mistakes of or they found it out that it is a mistake of the sailors who are pushing too hard the line. From my own experience, I would say uh, I liked it. The, the I liked it when the when the when the PRO was 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 behaving in that in that way. When he felt that he did make a mistake on the starting line, not not adjusting it properly, he would not put up the he would not put out the <laughs> the black flag. He would not put out the black uh, flag, yes. And when he was sure that that uh, we were pushing our limits, then he would uh, then he would raise the black flag. So, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think we can see. Maybe we can have again recap of this second start. If we can have it, it would be nice. Okay, here we are, and this is where we said maybe they're over again. Yes, yes, because this right-hand side boat's looking looking too low from the from the line, too below the line, too much below. So at 4:05, the new start is uh, planned. Yes, new start is planned in seven minutes, 16:05. Here is the beautiful uh, way of sleep. Yes, we have a beautiful uh, view out from here. Uh, I would say the race course is set. It was set again at uh, approximately the same position as yesterday. So, and the conditions are looking almost the same. So, so the guys sh should enjoy it. Looks again wonderful. It's sunny, 25, 26 Celsius, clear sky. Brilliant. Yes, brilliant conditions for sailing.
So we are we are in the same exact race course as today, right? Yes, that's true. That's true. There is there are two official race courses. One one uh, going out from the going out from the port to the right, which are they on now, and which the fleet is going uh, when the sea breezes. When the sea breezes, uh, there is, and uh, there is the one to the left uh, the, when the south wind is blowing. And uh, they they experienced that uh, race course. The guys who was here, uh, who were here for the for the district championship, they had a chance to sail one day in that condition and and that race race course area. Well, we see some IQ foil here. Yes, yes. The Olympic windsurfer. This is this is uh, old versus new. Yes, exactly. Old generation and new generation. Yeah, yes. Yes, the boat, the boat, older than, older than 100 years, and the boat, and the and the foil, we, and the, yeah, the Windsor foiling, which was, which was introduced a few years ago. Exactly, and that would be the Olympic. Uh, yes, and this was this is uh, the new Olympic class. Exactly, one of the first Olympic classes back in 1932, the Star Class. And uh, in the Portland uh, Windsor, and the next day on the starboard. Like we said, uh, the crew of uh, Juan K is Enrico Voltolini, and it just uh, finished uh, his campaign with the uh, Luna Rossa, so on the flying I-85. Yeah. Yes, yes. And now he's back here on the star class where he was. Training with the Diego ne with the, sorry with Keiko Bruni to go to, uh, but Diego Negri as well to go to London 2012. Yes, that's true. So anything is possible in sailing. Have you tried any foiling class? Unfortunately, not. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, we we are. We don't have any any in the in the club. Any actually, actually this uh, this uh, windsurfing foiling it it is from my from my sailing club. But okay. I, but I never did the windsurfing, so so it, it would be too, too big step to even try this. I think first I would need to learn windsurfing. Yes. Yes, I was I was, I was sailing this this st standard standard classes. Is uh, something like uh, begin begin with the optimist sail laser and then fin. This was this was how my sailing career went. Like mostly mostly orientated to the single-handed classes and, and, and uh, this, if we can say, traditional sailing. It's never too late. But it's never too late. That's true. I think I'm gonna give a give a windsurf a try this summer. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Never too late. Okay, now maybe with the, maybe with this footage from the camera, parallel with the with the starting line, we can be more accurate. If somebody gonna cross the line, yeah. So it's two minutes thirty to go. Two minutes twenty. Of course, they're still setting up, but it looks like still the committee boat, the right hand side is favored. Yes, yes, they are pushing. The guys are pushing there. Yeah, they're all down there. I wonder if they moved the committee, the, sorry, the peanut. Probably not. I mean, the, we had some five, six minutes delay, so for sure they were. They were re-anchoring some of the boats. I mean, it's not easy here. It's not easy to re-anchor. The the depth out there is around 50, 60 meters. So either they have to to ease the line, go backwards, or if they want if they want to go up, they need then they need to re-anchor. They need to put it fully out and then go much much to uh, go go front and then. Uh, put put down the anchor again. We 
here we are, last minute. Yes, into the last minute of the second second race of the day. We see that these boats are really careful. They are more than five, six boat lengths below the, the starting line. Yeah, they're a bit more careful this time. But I can still see them too close at the committee boat. Yes, at the committee boat they are close. So these uh, three coming uh, here on the left. These three uh, needs to sail one, one more minute until the starting line. Yes, and they've decided to get themselves uh, away from the chaos. They would they much rather have a clean start than uh, than the better position on the starting line. The guy in the middle of the lane seems like he might be out. Yes, we, we don't we didn't have a timer now. No, we did not, but he was either he had the best start ever or he was out. Yes. It's not for us to call, but we'll see if he gets he gets um back even though I don't think they they might not call him back they might let him know when he arrives at the top end top mark we will try to check it if 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 the start was clean but look at this look at this I would say that the boat which just stack on the port he's crossing the whole fleet he's crossing the whole fleet yes, he is so now I'm, I'm curious why everybody did chose and they were pushing hard for the race committee boat. Maybe on the long run the, the right side is paying off. Not sure anymore. But I tell you, it's uh, sometimes it's like that. Everybody wants one side, and then the ones that end up in the other side are actually doing better. You've done more races than I did, so you probably know. Yes, the guy, the guy started at the pin. So I mean, started to the left. Did cross all the fleet. So, so either on the long term, the right side will pay off. We'll see. Who do we have here? Some Italian boat. The first one here. Yes, the first one. Maybe even the second one is Italian. It was a nice start by Hubert about the King and Weiser. Now leading the ranking since last night. Yeah, they have a great results so far. Yeah, they've still the perfect regatta so far, yes. And they look, they're crossing in front of uh, many other boats, huh? Yes, they're crossing in front. I wonder, well, they probably were on the left because they're crossing them in port. Yes, this on the left, uh, this is Italian Enrico Chiepi and uh, Ferdinando Colanino. Looks yep. like looks like they are they are starting each race on the on the left hand side. <laughs> now yeah, I can like now I can recognize them easily. Whenever I'm in doubt it's them. It's them. <laughs> <laughs> well if you start on the left it's good but then when you talk you got the whole fleet on starboard. Yes. And you're and you're on port. So if, if, if you can cross them, you are a king. If you cannot yes. cross them, you are you are you're in done. big trouble. In big trouble. And let's see where it goes from here. It's a long line up to the yes. up to the upwind mark. Yes, up to the first beat. It's gonna, I think. More or less, it's 15 minutes or more, so it's a it's a long way to tell anything. So I don't 
I don't know. Where would you go, Yazid? I'm Probably I would do what the guys that have the guys that started on the left and now are on the right. I would have done. I like that. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to but say. It, 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 so the yesterday, yesterday we talked before first race and the second race, and I both races I told you that I would choose the left side. The first one I was right. And about the second one, if you remember, Tonchi had the worst start ever, yeah. fa failing on, on the pin end. And uh, I was left uh, later. I, I went down to the club when they came ashore, and, and uh, I was curious what happened. What happened out there? How was it? Which side paid off? And from one guy, I heard out that the that the wind was shifting to the right. And so I asked Tonchi, so you went so you went to the right? And he said no, I came in the front from the left side. So I was so now I was fully confused with what happened. <laughs> so probably as the wind was dropping, it was a big patches of the wind and you needed to play good. And probably there were there were shifts as well with his with his with his wind yesterday the second race. So probably today as the wind again is slightly dropping. Maybe, maybe we're gonna have the same situation that you need to play, that you cannot go fully one side. Yes, if, do, does the wind have some obstacles on its way? So, over the top mark, do we have islands or...? No, no I mean, over the top mark we have an island, but that island is, uh, oh, right. I don't know, like five miles away, so, so, okay. it's, so it doesn't affect anything. So it's the natural shift of the wind? It's a natural shift of the wind, yeah, that's true. So it's nothing you can actually see in advance. Well, you can if you're a good sailor. You can. You are trying. You you try to put your head out and and and, and look for look for the different color out there on the sea and try to recognize if something is going on. But yeah. Yeah. But there is no natural obstacles. Yeah, no natural obstacles. And you can see exactly what you were explaining before earlier that the the waves are actually slightly coming more from the right than the wind is yes yes that's true so when you're on port you're actually facing the wave but also i guess it's quite annoying also when you're sailing starboard yes it, like starboard is it's more like not 90 degrees angle uh, but uh, yeah, almost like 90 degrees. You see now, you see the boat now of uh, of uh, Italian Enrico Chiaffi that that he's almost going straight into the waves, into this, this chop wave, and how the bow is jumping. Yeah, it will be. I think he. Yeah, I I think he he lost a bit. Not sure. I mean, from this angle, cannot be sure 100 percent. But I think the wind. Either it was shift or something, but the wind went slightly right. Yes. He was. So I think uh, yeah. when you start uh, all the way to pin, and at some point you have to go back inside, especially after a day like yesterday, that we've seen it, we've seen the wind uh, slightly shifting on the right towards the end of the regatta. Yes. Uh, it was a good idea to start on the left, but then you should, they should have done like Hubert, and then and go towards the middle of the of yes race. yes for for now i would say the guys the boats the boats who did tuck uh, after the start and uh, and managed to cross the the right hand side fleet it made a good job because the majority of fleet was there and they immediately were in control of them and yes. and, and they could play out the shift right later it might be too late for this uh left boats to duck now well it's never too late but they would be behind everybody yeah also we know that the start was clear we get the confirmation from the race committee boat that the start was clear nobody was out that's perfect we saw some beautiful pictures last night with the dolphins on the race course yes yes they were dolphins is this uh, is this uh, normal? Is this uh, something that it happens in split? Yes, during yeah you can. I wouldn't 
wouldn't say often, but uh, it, but often, <laughs> but often you do yeah, yeah, see, yeah. but often you do see uh, dolphins. It is, it is uh, during the summer when people come to for vacations. Oh, okay. and, yeah, for vacations and go with the boats around the islands. Uh, there are a lot of footages with the dolphins going in the front of the sailboats or or, or the or the ribs. So it's it's something like common. It's it's not uh, unusual. That's great. The picture is by, um, well, I cannot pronounce his name apart from Hervoya, but um, amazing pictures. You can watch them on the Star Class website and on the Star Class uh, Facebook page. Yes, that's true. We are happy to to present the to broad, broadcast this out the pictures of the split and uh, as well the the footages which Herboy as well present on, on the web page. It's 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 wonderful. That is true. So we cannot uh, tell who's ahead. We cannot tell who's ahead, and I'm not sure, not if maybe this is the left shift at the moment. Looking the angles of the boat, sailing port. So it doesn't look like it's a one-way racer. I don't know how. What's the the saying in English like? Yeah, yeah, one way, yeah. yeah. It's not, uh, it's not um, defined. But uh, it looks like everybody's going towards the, the right now. Huh? Now everybody, yeah, is pushing yeah. towards the right. I wish I was on a boat right now. Yes, you could give, you could give me a, a live feedback. <laughs> yes. When you see races, would you don't you feel like you would much rather be on a boat, on a sailing boat? Yes, yes, I said that. I said that uh, earlier today. Er, earlier today, in the first race, when I saw the conditions, I said I wish I was there. It looked it did look beautiful. I mean, still looks beautiful, but yeah. Well, another day of perfect conditions. Apart from the choppy world. <laughs> yes. But I think uh, I think sometimes these uh, sailors, when they don't have their perfect day, they will complain. And if they had a good, if they had good results, even if the conditions were not good, they would say that they, that it was perfect. Yeah, but I I don't think anybody will complain. These days, because no. because because these conditions are are really brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, not just brilliant; they are consistent. Uh, as I said, there is no obstacles or or anything yes. like that here. So the wind is wind is clean. So it's it's uh, more coming out more the speed of the boat, the strategic, the tactic. Uh, so yeah, it's that's why this this place offer is offering the the great sailing. Yes, and this is why I heard one complaint and many other people saying we should go to Split more often. There should be there should be more races in Split. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. That means they they feel welcome here and that they like the or organization how how it's handled and everything. And that's a, that's a that's great to hear. What's it like in winter? It's winter. It's winter. I mean, half half. Depending, depending. Uh, you can have a uh, this nice south wind, which is a warm wind. M mostly, yeah. I mean, warm wind. Mostly warm wind. Yeah. With, with a with a bigger, longer waves. Okay. And you can have this uh, offshore wind, north wind, bura. Oh, the bura. Yes, which is cold and and. Person, personally, I don't like, I don't like it. It's too strong. I mean, 
No, it's, too, it's, it's just because it's cold. But as it's offshore, it's, it's very tricky, it's very shifty. Yeah, it's a different kind. It's not a big wave, more, more uh, flat water and, and shifts. Yeah. So yeah, my two favorite wind is this sea breeze and, and Yugo. We are on board with the full boat and plane. Even though upwind we don't see much of them. Yeah, we don't see much of them. Maybe on a starboard, I think it's a, it's a better view, not sure. We did try to fix, we did try to fix uh, after yesterday to, to see much of them. Because yesterday we were not able all the time to see them. I think you're just late because they're too close to the map. <laughs> and the crew is hiking out. You don't see many white sails around anymore in, uh, in professional regattas. Now they're all grey or or a black. Only only lasers. Only lasers now I think left left in, in this fleet with the white sails. I uh, know lasers and four seventy, sorry. Yeah. Four seventy as well is sailing the with the same material. But yeah, Finn, 49 er uh, Nakra. We all have a, a different material. and uh, let alone the big boats. They all have the Kevlar, what is it? Kevlar, carbon sails? I, I think it can be a mixture. I don't know what they are, yeah, what what the companies are these days uh, offering, which, which, uh, which mixture of the materials Where the star is always the same for many years now. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if they were. I don't know now. I'm just wondering if they have ever tried, did try to, to change the the materials. If they ever did vote for the change of it or no. I don't think in the last few years nobody has tried to change anything. This is so peaceful. Well, it looks peaceful to us, but for them... <laughs> for them it's hard. Yes. For sure, that after today again they will feel much more exhausted. Because now it's two days in a row with a, with a strong breeze. And a tough fleet. Yes, and a tough fleet. And this is the, the toughest part of the regatta. It's where you reach for the... Windward mark. <laughs> yes, it's true. You, you, I mean, you have to push the whole race, but in the in the first upwind, you can make. It's it's important to make to make a bit distance or to, to join. Join mark rounding in the in the first part of the fleet in the top ten, and once you are there, your lives get much easier. Everything gets easier because you have less boats covering you, more options to choose. Everything, everything goes easier. Yeah. If you if you do well this first up, uh, this first bit, then um, you are building on your other legs. That's true. But now we can say, looking looking backwards, uh, oh, as well yesterday, if I'm not wrong you can correct me i think yesterday both races the the leader the guy who did round the, the top mark the first mark in the first place did keep the keep the lead all the time 
Am I right? Yeah, you are very right. Yes, that happened as well today. But the, but the boats. And then Hubert that did the same. Yes, but the boats who were from the second onwards. Not all changed. Yes. Yeah, they were changing. They were changing. Well, we saw the beautiful comeback by Tonchi. Yes. How did Tonchi do in the first race today? Tonchi did. I would. I think was fifth place. Oh, okay. So yes. he's built up. Yeah, yeah, he, he did build up through through the race. He he wasn't all the time in, in, in that position. I think he he round the first mark in tenth or something like that, but he was he was building up through the race moving forward. And I think also last downwind he did, did caught two three places, not sure. Something like that. Yeah, he finished fourth. Fourth, sorry, yeah. And um he started behind everybody in the fleet. Yes, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, yesterday. Sorry. Yes. Yes. He 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 said in the interview that that yesterday actually the boats the boat of his starts were really bad, as well the first one. But in the first race he didn't he didn't find his way to to go come to back. to come back. Yes. But yeah, thankfully the he was happy to that the second race he, he managed to, to come back and now to get some low low points because I bet his expectations are high at the moment yes he has to defend yes he is in local knowledge. home water he finished yes. last European Championship he finished fourth and I think he's he would he's aiming for the medal this time in his home water yes that's true Can you spot the the mark? Uh, yes, the, uh, just when the where the right uh, this uh, motorboat just passed. Okay. There is oh, a, that's the mark. Yes. There is the yellow, small yellow dot. Yeah, now now we see. It. There so they are closing. They're really close to the mark. Yeah, when they will tack, it means that they're on ley line. They are on the ley line, and I would say, like, maybe one minute away from it. So let's see who is the first one. And if they're able to keep their lead, like they did so far. It might be Favini. This is US, this is I think Hoggy Diaz. Oh, it's US? Oh, all right. Wow, Hoggy. That's good. I was surprised yesterday. He still was in the top five, but, uh, but he can do much better than that. But this guy is ahead. I just crossed ahead. Yes, I think this is Croatia. 8531, Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj. And the boat below, the boat below is US, I think. I think it's Ogi Diaz. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Ogi in the first positions. Okay, here we are. Yes, it will be interesting to see if Foggy will need an uh, extra extra tech or he is able to... No. Oh he's, no, I was yes, too low. Yes, he's building up the space to, to tech. He's gonna have two tacks to do. So we have the Mark 1 the first place rounding Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj. In yeah, the, for the first time rounding first. Yes, in the second place, Ogi Diaz and Christian Nechamer. And in the third place, Tonchi Stipanovic and Tudor Bilic. Well played. Yeah, well played. 
In the fourth position is uh, Juan okay. Kay and then Enrico Voltolini. <coughs> then we have Enrico Chieffi and uh, Ferdinando Colanino. And, and Javiero are yeah, with uh, Anthony Sav Moore. Xavier Rojar. And then Pete Ecker with Eduardo Natucci from Switzerland, an Italian. And Hubert is here. Yes. These are the, I think, top 10 boats we just saw, more or less. Yes. Now I was thinking about the waves in the downwind. They might help you, right? Actually, they are they are as they are looking towards the wind as as they are a bit to the right. They are pushing you if if you go just like straight looking just the waves, it's gonna push you too too much right. So uh, yeah, well, I would be. But I from the from the previous downwinds I saw the guys are some guys are like, same like yesterday. Some guys are pushing like more to the deep pump and go go really deep to the left. And some are going, keeping this this high high mode, high mode going, going like uh, nine, that that the wave is hitting them straight in in their back. But it's interesting to see that uh, that the bows who were overall, overall yesterday uh, in the front are again again rounding again in all the time in the fight. Yeah, now we have the visualized top five boats, like one rounding. Yes, we have the same people, but uh, yet uh, different, huh? Yes, yes. What do you think about the wind? Has it, has it dropped a little? Uh, I can tell you that today I feel much colder than yesterday. So I would, I would say that it's, that it's stronger than yesterday, but when, when we received the message from the race committee that it's 12 knots, I was, I was really surprised. I had a feeling it's much more. We are now with the leaders of the fourth race, Marin Mishura and Tonko Baraj. I'm surprised to see Tonko lying on the on the boat deck. Yes. And not uh, rocking the boat. We're gonna see how they how they're gonna do the downwind. Probably Marin is still not yelling at him, so he is allowed to do this. <laughs> the skipper that yells at the crew is uh, typical. Yes. the downwind leg uh, it's going to be a little faster than the upwind but not so much because the the starboard goes um, about the same speed upwind and downwind so here we see the problems putting the jib on the other side for the jibe yeah they had some issues yeah. it wasn't a perfect jibe we have to tell Tonko, <laughs> but I'm sure Marin is already telling him.
before the rocking uh, was allowed, the downwind was uh, where the where the crew and the skipper could take some rest. Yes, yes. But I, the something the rocking came in and uh, the rolling came in, and that was the end of it. Yes, I mean the the, the I don't know. New generations, new times bring uh, new thoughts and, and new ways, and trying to implement it, as well happened in the in, in the fin class 15 years ago when when free pumping was was introduced. So the downwind starts to be really physical, and uh, and it's it's almost became like like rowing. Yes, and now sometimes the. Uh the crew says they rest more while hiking on the upwind. Than <laughs> yeah, yeah, downwind. that's true. Okay, we see that the jibe of Foggy Diaz didn't succeed. And, and we have a picture from Hubert. <laughs> Look at how with what, with uh, so much intensity, is looking in front of him. Yes, yes, he's he's try looking at the waves, trying to catch, trying to catch the waves in the best possible way. But you can see that all as well. The crew of Tochi Stepanovic is is sitting. He's not staying on his feet. Yes, I guess there might be more more waves than wind at the moment. Probably yes, because <laughs> we do see the white uh, tips over the on top of the waves, but the the crew laying on deck it's not a good sign for big wind. you think maybe drop down uh, below 10 8 no 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 way no way i think it's still huh? no way i think it's still for sure 12 knots out there i don't think it would be any 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 white sparks on the on the on top of the waves if it was any different okay we see from this camera that i mean we are not sure about how about depth of it, but we see that they are going towards the mark. Yeah, <clears throat> they are approaching the downwind gate. They're approaching the downwind gate, that's true. And um, their choices will tell us about the wind shift and wind direction. I think we might have a split here. Not sure, yeah, but, but, but I think. see the marks but I think might be a split they want to be clear after they round the mark they don't want to be disturbed by each other so yeah you might be right they're too close to round the same one they would do that if there was a clear wind uh, direction or wind change yes. Unless, unless there is a one mark which is uh, which is uh, too much in favor, and they will choose to go around the same one. Exactly. If they both go to one mark, then it means that it's super favor. Yes. So it's uh, Marin Misura with Tonko Barac and uh, Ogi Diaz with Christian Nehammer. Uh, yes, but these are actually two creations. Don't she get uh, from the third? Oh, so Ogi got left behind. Yes, Don't she, Don't she came into the lead. I think this is Don't she. And uh, Marin lost one position and now he's in the second. And uh, how did Don't she? Was it on the right? 
Tonchi was uh, Tonchi was uh, on the yeah. So I mean, looking the downwind. Right of the forest, but it was the left. Looking downwind, he was on the left. So yeah. he, so he was going by the lee a lot. Well played. Yes. He knows. He knows what the wind is going to do here in speed. He's putting down the pole. Getting, getting ready. Yeah, I, I think as well that this mark is much in favor. Yes, and uh, Martin is not so close to Tonchi. He's, he can choose whatever mark he prefers. They're not uh, going to be affected by Tonchi. Yes, you see two of them. Mark rounding. Here is Ogidia's opposite mark. Third place, fourth place, fourth place for Argentina, Augie. and fifth place Xavier Ojar. Xavier Ojar, who's going with Augie on the left. Yes, he managed to squeeze in because Augie had a drive to do, rounding the mark. Sixth place, Switzerland, Pierre Eckert. Now we have seventh and eighth place, two Italians. And I think in the ninth place, it's a German, Hubert. And then the rest of the fleet here, equally going left and right, depending on the on the choices of the other sailors. Two legs. Uh, more, one upwind and one downwind. Yes, now we can uh, see if uh, Hubert will still lead uh, tonight. It's true that this um, long shot doesn't make you understand the depth of the course, but it's a beautiful shot. Yes, that's true. I mean, from this camera catching, catching uh, those footage, uh, the camera is like uh, three, three miles from three or four miles distance. Tonji had a decent lead over Marin Misura. The second, please. Uh, Tonji had a decent lead over the second one, Marin, no? Well, maybe a few seconds, not not that much. No, no, but uh, if they if if he covers him, he might <clears throat> he might be able to keep the lead. Yes, yes, he might keep the lead, but uh, yes, again, we are curious to see if the because the the fleet again did split out uh, to the left and right, so it means it's not they are not sure which side is in favor in favor. It's going to be interesting to see if maybe, I don't know, Ogi, he, who was first on the left one, if he's going to close the gap. Uh, 
I wonder who are these two boats very close to each other on top of the fleet. Can you see them on the left of the, of the screen? Uh, yeah, no, it's not, yeah, unfortunately I cannot. But he might not be leading actually because the other one higher is uh, probably ahead. So this is the this is the picture one of the two boats we were asking for. Who are they? This uh, so it was probably uh, as I saw it was this was Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehammer. Yeah. And uh, the boat who did tag before was uh, was Xavier Ojar and Anthony Munoz. Okay, so they stayed. They they went up together after the mark. Rounding. Yes, after the mark rounding, they were close to each other and they. The Xavier managed to keep kept uh, that yes the same position for the few few minutes. Is this still Augie? Yes, this is still Augie. We see that he's pushing for the for the left hand side still. Still yes. not attacking either. He's waiting for the right shift. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he saw something there. Something we cannot see. But he's stacking now, yes. You cannot go too far on the left or on the right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. The, the angles of this class are a bit different than I'm used to, so I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure after they tack if they will be able to cross somebody in front or not. Again, these two boats are close to each other, Xavier Ojar and Ogi Diaz. So Xavier finished and ended up being in the same uh, as it was. Yes, I, I wonder, I wonder where, where the previous race Xavier, uh, Xavier was. We didn't see him much in front yesterday and, and today first race. And... Yeah, I didn't see the results of the three races. Maybe we can ask if we can have them, please.
So here is Augie, world champion in Miami in 2016 with Bruno Prada. That was Bruno's fourth uh, world title. And then he went on uh, winning the fifth one two years ago in Porto Cervo in 2019. Yeah, so I have, I have the results after the three races. So, okay, in, so in the lead is uh, German Hubert Merkelbach and Kilian Weisse. The, in the second position, in, uh, Enrico Chieffi and uh, Ferdinando Colanino. In third place, Ogi Diaz and Christian Nehammer. In the fourth place, there is Emilios Papatanasios and uh, Stilianos Nutsos. In fifth position, Flavio Favini and Nicolas Saravale and in the sixth place Matea Rapo van der Schiet in seventh place Donci Stefano in Studer Bilic. So there is a Croatian fight going on. Yes. <laughs> Croatians are great sailors. Yes, the, the 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 boats the boats after the after the actually after the third place they are looking close with the points. And yeah, it's a still long way, still long way. We are on the halfway of the racing, so still lots of lots of points in the count, and will be will be will be changes. And tomorrow, after the fifth race, uh, the this card will come in. This card will come in. Actually, I'm looking at Xavier. Who I said that I didn't see him sailing well, but actually he he has 26, 6, 10, and now he's uh, I think top five. So after this card, he will be again into the play. Yeah, and the, this card will play big, uh, big weight on um, Tonchis. That's right. I, I, I see that everybody, everybody besides top three boats, everybody actually besides top four boats, everybody has some, some place which I think they, are, they wish to discard. You think the left-hand side boat is in front? That's a tough question, eh? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Now we see that here is two Croatian guys, Tonči Stipanović and uh, Marin Mišura and Tonko Barač. So I'm curious which who, who was this. There is a national fight, national battle. National battle, and I'm I'm wondering who this boat is coming from the from the from the right. I think that's Juan K coming from the from the right hand side. I didn't see him rounding the gate. He ran the gate in the in the in the fourth position. Oh, so he went. Uh, he followed Tonchi. Yes, he and followed Tonchi and, and Marin. Yes.
yes, I would say that uh, two Croatians are in uh, comfort lead over the rest of the fleet. As it is national battle, they are pushing hard and maybe they are extending. It's about prestige. Also, I'll be curious to see if uh, the left side, which Ogi Diaz and Xavier Hard did played out, if it did paid off. We can only see the, the, the top mark, and I don't think we're, we have much to wait for, because uh, it's almost one hour since the start. Yes, we might be close to the top mark. You can see as well that there is not anymore that uh, uh, the top of the waves are not white, meaning that maybe again the wind did slightly drop. Yes, it might have uh, dropped a little, but you can tell better than I can. So we're about uh, one minute, 20 seconds from the top mark. Both of these boats are on the on the ley line. And I guess it's the two Croatians. Yes, it's two Croatians. And probably 1K kept the third spot. We'll see, we'll see. We had on the left side Ogi Diaz and Xavier Ojar. We'll see yeah. which, we'll see which side was better. Yeah, now we see on the ley line as well, Xavier Ojar did tack. So Xavier tacked on the right ley line. Oh no, Xavier and is the third one here. Yes, yes. Oh, so it's not 1K. And apparently Marin Mishura is feeding over Donchi. I think it's, uh, I, I don't think so. I think Donchi is still, he's still first. So Tonji is the one we see on the screen on the right. Yes, so Tonji is, yes. Marin is on the left. So, of course, if they stay like this and they're very close, Tonji has rights to go when they get closer to the, the mark. To the mark, yes. Because he's got the inside. <laughs> no, but I think he's a little bit, he's likely ahead anyway. And then we see Ogi is back there. Yes, I think he's in front and they are uh, in enough over the over the lay line so there will be no problem around in the mark we see how the crews are hiking hard as well as, as the helmsmen's whatever side they chose it took them a pretty much the same time to get to the top mark because the, it looks like they're very in, in very similar position as at the gate. Yes, I, I, that. I mean, we saw that and they were sailing really K, close. Juan K just uh, tucked uh, in front of uh, Ogi. So Tonchi is the first one rounding the mark, followed by Marin Mishra. Yes. And Kubaraj. And with the Tonchi, we have Tudor Village. And then there is 1K confirming his uh, third spot. Followed uh, either by Augie or Xavier. This I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to call. I would say Xavier. 
Some of the areas I had. Yeah, definitely. Not even a problem of giving room to... Oh, have you missed again the ley line? It was too low. These two taxes, they are hard on, on, the, on the boat, on the boat speed. And then I think it is uh, Hubert Merkelbach with uh, Kilian Weiser. Yes, yes it's true. them. And Schmidt Becker and uh, Eduardo Natucci. The only Swiss boat. Piet Eckert is the title holder, holder of the European Championship, but he won it with Federico Melo last time. So here we see it in the graphic Stepanovic Village, Minsura Barat, Kudum Jan Volterini, Roa Munoz. And Diaz Nehammer. We know that after Diaz it was Hubert Merkelbach, and then another German boat, but uh, I wouldn't know which one. So the only uh, one missing is are the Italians from this uh, regatta, eh? from this race. Yes, they are. This time they are not in front. Yeah. Maybe. They're not in the leading pack. I think the German who was who was behind the pack we just mentioned was uh, Daniel Fritz and Alberto Ambrosini. If I did recall the right uh, sail number, I think it was them. And the fleet is now almost uh, all going downwind for the last uh, yes. leg. Yes, from this footage we see their mar marked rounding. It looks like a video game, huh? <laughs> but we cannot control them. No, they're going... They're going independently. But when the wind drops uh, in the afternoon, when the sea breeze drops, does it go to the right? That's not the right so far. Uh, should should slightly go go uh, to, with the sun to the right, but uh, looking this race, I didn't I didn't see I didn't see this uh, this happened. I, I would say it was it was there were shifts during the race, as well as the first beat of the second race. There were shifts, as I mentioned yeah, earlier. You couldn't. It wasn't a one way one way race. You you were. You were not. You weren't able to sail one side. Only one side. You needed to play by the shifts all the time. Probably these shifts were affected with the pressure, and, and the guys who did play it the right came in front. This is Tonko and uh, Tudor that we see. They just have to keep their lead for uh, one mile, probably less than a mile now. That's true. We saw them. We saw them sailing a good downwind. This is a nice surf. Yes, They're this... surfing the wave nicely. <laughs> yeah, we saw we saw them sailing really nice downwinds this last day and today. So, so I bet they they will be able to keep their their lead. Well, Tonchi is a laser sailor, so he certainly knows the importance of the downwind in a race. And uh, even though laser and star are quite different because uh, the star is a big heavy keel and the laser does not, is a dinghy. Um, still, we've just seen them surfing a wave, so 
So there is a bit of that technique that Tonji so certainly has more experience with than the rest of the fleet. Also you guys in the Finn, uh, it's important for you to follow and, and surf the wave and plan on the waves. Yes, yes. As long as you do that, the, the better it is. So here we can see Marin, Misura and uh, Don Barat. Nice jive, clean jive. Nice jive. Yeah. We can see that again. The Tonchi took part of going, uh, going oh, much, okay. much, much by the lead. He extended the lead. Yes, and he did extend it a bit the lead. Yes, he's a downwind man for sure. Then, if somebody more technical than uh, me or you could also start talking about the different. Uh, different style boats because they don't they don't all come from the same uh, boatyard but there are different ones building them around the world with different design and some of them are favored in the downwind was some of them are better on the up depending on the angle of the hill so I mean, I don't want to get into that also because I don't know what boats the guys are sailing. Yeah, me neither. I, I mean, I know, I know Tonchi did uh, quite recently get a, get a new star. And uh, looking by the way he's sailing, he should be satisfied with it. Yes, I would say so. He cannot complain. Tonchi won uh, the... 17th district last weekend that was the opening uh, event for the star european 2021 in split and it's not like uh, it was the only one sailing there there was a very good uh, and tough fleet sailing at the at the 17th district yes the guys were sailing for the uh, two days out of three uh, they had first day, first day nice sea breeze and uh, and uh, another day uh, nice uh, south wind. Unfortunately, the last day of the competition, the, that south wind was too strong and the fleet decided to stay ashore. Also, that second day when the, there was this strong uh, south wind of 20, 20 or more knots, there were we had some. We saw some uh, mast breaking, uh, so it was it was uh, interesting from from the outside to see it. Speaking of uh, weather forecast, uh, do you have you seen any about tomorrow and the day after tomorrow? Uh, I haven't, but uh, I'm gonna look at it. If uh, I remember at the end of the at the beginning of the week, they were. Speaking of these kind of conditions for the whole week, but uh, as we've uh, as we've known, uh, as we've uh, grown to know, uh, things might change over the week. Uh, things might change. Yeah, uh, looking looking the weather forecast for tomorrow, it does show some oh, west northwest wind. So different, uh, slightly different slightly direction. Slightly different direction, and it, it is uh, lighter, like below 10 knots. So okay. yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be as well. Yeah, curious to see what's gonna happen. For sure, this this is a um, micro place, uh, so not not often the 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 weather forecasts are can be 100% accurate because a, lo a lot are affected uh, by the by the warmth of, of the of the land so uh, if i think i don't know if the i don't want to say something wrong but uh, in the case uh, like these last two days if the if the we have a clear sky and a nice sun i think again the sea breeze can kick in okay also because north of northwest then uh, there is the island blocking the air. Yes, that's true. That's true. And then in that case, I don't know how they're going to position, if they're going to probably, I mean, they, they, they in the sailing instruction, this is the, this is the, 
this is the race course area so in that case uh, in that case the the top mark gonna be to the right actually close to the island we are looking now if we're gonna have the northwest uh, northwest wind it would be a totally different course and a different regatta Yes, it, so, will be a, it will be a different course. Now we will have the island as an obstacle and uh, changes in, in the wind shifts. Yeah, so as much as we would like to see the 34 boats challenged in a, with different conditions, that might be tricky. It might be too light, maybe. So we, would, uh, we wouldn't mind to have uh, more of the same as we've seen today and yesterday. Yes. Let, what about Saturday? Can you can you see Saturday? Yes, Saturday. I see Saturday. It's a west wind, so so something like this. Uh, but uh, at the moment, it it is a bit lighter than than the past two days. It, it says about 12 knots, which is still a wonderful condition. I was gonna say it might be lighter, but still not too light. Yes, I wouldn't complain. No, me neither. Exactly. So I think Tonko is uh, happily going to cross in uh, 10 seconds. I can see the mark there. Is, is that the mark? This is the mark of the finish line and we are with the footage on Tonchi Stepanovic and Tudor Bilic who are crossing the fourth race, the second race of the day in the first position. I think this will uh, give a big lift and push uh, to Tonchi. Yeah, yes. the guys are happy. Yeah, yeah very happy, that. yes. Yeah, they've had a good day for sure. And look at the margin on the second one. You cannot even see him. You can't see them. Come on, Martin. <laughs> Where are you? He's hiding in the left corner. Gosh, he's hiding well. <laughs> oh, there he is. There they are. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that Tonchi had a spectacular downwind. Yes, now coming in a second place, another Croatian, Marin Mishura and Tonko Barac. I think they are happy, happy as well, yes. Yeah. Well, we have a <laughs> battle for the third place. We actually do, I think. I think the guy closer to us is uh, trying his best uh, to beat this was Xavier Ojar and uh, Joan K. So who's the one that crossed with ahead? Oof, I, I don't know. I, I would say French. I would say French, but I'm not. Okay. So anyway, these are third and fourth, and Augie is probably fifth. So here is Augie. Yes, Augie, okay. fifth. And who is sixth? Hubert? Hubert? Yeah. Should be Hubert, yes, it is. Probably Hubert is uh, still the leader overall. Hubert will be still the leader, yes. He's having great race so far. Winning the first race of today and now being six. Hubert might be the best of the day for the second time in a row. I mean, we didn't see the whole um, ranking after the third race, but... Um, no, Tonchi. Tonchi had... Uh, Tonchi had... Uh, Tonchi was one here and... Well, Tonchi was one and five, so... Tonchi... Oh, so it's the best one, yes, yes. Because uh, Hubert was one and six. Yes, that's true. Yeah. But still very close, huh? Very close, yeah. Hubert is on fire. Okay, so I think um, until we hear some uh, better news from the committee boat, the plan is for a 1 p.m. start tomorrow. Again, yes, again tomorrow the plan is to start 1 p.m. We had, today we had the postponement of, of one hour because again the breeze did kick in a bit later. Uh, but yeah, for, to, for tomorrow we're going to see what's, uh, what's going on. Again, we're going to be live with footage. I think at, 
at least one hour before and uh, we're gonna let you know if the start is on time or it will be late. And let's see if the conditions are same as today or like you've seen uh, Joseph from the forecast. Uh, yes, different. yes, and, and we're gonna see if we're gonna have a different conditions and Yes. Okay, we have uh, here the recap uh, of Donchi. We have the recap of the finish line. Donchi entering in the first place, being the winner of the day with a with a scoring one and five. So a total of six points. A total of six points. I think they are really really happy. Yeah. I think now they did not have a perfect day yesterday. So yes, I think they are waiting for the one more race to have a discard. Yes, and then uh, try to to reach the podium. If not, the gold yes. medal. Yes, and, and now with a with a with a big margin, with a they managed to escape. Was coming the second Croatian boat with uh, Marin Mishura and Donko Barac. Like we said, they're also happy of her race. Yeah, and now we're gonna have. Let's see better. Let's let's try and see who's actually yeah, ahead. Yeah, we're gonna have a slow motion of the, of the finish line. Okay, so <laughs> it depends uh. where the camera is, because from yes, this angle, one K looked like it was ahead, but I'm not. Yeah, the camera is in front of the race committee boat. That's why. That's why Juan K looks yeah. like that he was in front. Yeah, this is a nice shot of the downwind. This is well, actually from the boat going back in. Yeah, this is this is the shot. Uh, the boat, all the boats heading back this to is, uh, back to split. Yes. This is the very famous race for the crane. Yes. Now, now, now it's going to be the fight. Yeah, the first one who gets into the harbor will be the first one whose boat is going to be lifted. That's true. Are you going to lift, uh, do you lift, uh, do you take out every boat or you do half and half? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, everybody, is, uh, everybody is allowed to put out the boat. So, but I don't know if, if everybody is uh, willing to do or not. I mean, I saw yesterday. Normally they take it out every day. Yeah, if, they I, have, if they can, normally they take it out every day. Yes, if I'm, the top doesn't have room enough, then they would do half a fleet one day and the other half the other day. No, no, there, there is enough space for everybody to be out. I mean, uh, I saw yesterday probably the boats who were coming later. I mean, in the back, they were, they were, uh, they tied their boats to the, to, uh, they left it in the water to go take a lunch and probably later they put it out on the train. Yeah, probably this is... They're going to all take it out. Yeah, yeah but anyway, they're all going to take it out. Yeah, so race for the crane. Here we are. So I think we can invite everybody to join us again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Yes. Okay. Two more, of, um, two more races of the 2021 Star European Championship in Split. Croatia? Yes. Okay, everybody, thanks again for watching us. Uh, uh, tomorrow we, uh, we will be again with you from 12 p.m. Hopefully the race will start at 1. Otherwise, we're going to let you know it's going to be postponed. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed and uh, see you tomorrow. And thanks, Kroatel, for broadcasting this. And thank you, Josip. Thank you.
Thank you. 